From the chilly slopes of Mauna Kea Volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, scandal in GCN headquarters as Dan is accused of cheating at the Zwift Academy. I will be asking the difficult questions. He will be squirming with the answers. No comment. Uh, we've also got solar-powered e-bikes, glow-in-the-dark bike lanes, and the most incredible DIY aero hack you have ever seen. I missed a memo on the jumpers today, didn't I? Yep, blue today. <laughs> this week in the world of cycling, we learned that Al Merritt is a total legend. Uh, the 83-year-old American achieved his goal of cycling 25,000 miles, the equivalent of the circumference of the world, all in his own Carlsbad neighborhood in California. Yeah, his daily afternoon bike rides have made him a local institution over the past 11 years, and 200 people gathered for a surprise party to celebrate his success. Apparently, every single one of his rides ended with a beer in his garage, <laughs> something I'm already aspiring to in my retirement. Something you might actually achieve in your retirement <laughs> yeah. as well. Uh, we also learned this week that we don't need to worry about the global bike shortage anymore, thanks to a Basque design studio called Archimania. Simply download their CAD file, get someone to cut your plywood, and hey presto, you could be riding around on this. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Surely the global bike shortage isn't quite that bad. Quite. Anyway, sticking with shortage, finally we learned this week that Dan has some serious questions to answer. On last week's show, Gavin Hart was among a whole raft of people who noticed that Dan's Zwift profile has him down as male. Correct. 72 kilos. Was correct, now 71. Mm, well done. And 130 centimetres tall, which is four foot three. I can explain. Right then, Dan, let me guess. Like Tyler Hamilton, you've got a conjoined twin. I wasn't, no. Did you have a few whiskeys the night before, like Floyd Landis? N no, just, just beer. Did Gilberto Simone's aunt bring you some sweets back from Peru that were laced with cocaine? Wasn't that either. So what you're saying then is, like Maro Sant'Ambrogio, you're impotent. I am, but that is not my excuse for this. So let me explain. I've got a good excuse. I bought a tape measure from Alibaba Express and it turned out to be a counterfeit. A counterfeit tape measure is your excuse that, for that, cheating that on this That was just a really bad joke, Si. So genuinely what happened is that my son, Jude, used my Zwift account. So basically, I've been too lazy to set him his own one up despite him pestering me regularly to have his own Zwift account. And too tight, perhaps? Well, no, because Zwift accounts are free for children of Jude's age. Really? Oh, that's cool. I might set a couple up actually for my two then. Huh. Obviously, you were too tight to get yeah. your children's Zwift accounts. <laughs> anyway, what actually happened was that at some point before the Zwift baseline test, Jude used my Zwift account and he changed his height and weight to what he actually is. And then at the end of his Zwift session, he changed the weight back, but he forgot to change the height. So anyway, whilst I'm doing the baseline test, I'm thinking to myself, I am doing surprisingly well here compared to the other people doing the test at the same time. Maybe Jude's been on the bike and hasn't changed the weight in the high back, but I looked at my power to weight ratio and it worked out for 72 kilograms. And it was only after two sessions of the Zwift Academy that I noticed my height. Or lack of, I guess. But rather than come clean, rather than correct your mistake, right the wrong, you just carried on living a lie. I had no choice. Well, that's what they all say. No. Yes, but I did have no choice because the whole aim of the Zwift Academy is to find out whether you've made improvements by the end of it and how significant those improvements are. And in order to do that accurately, you've got to keep certain parameters the same. Try and use the same trainer, the same bike on that trainer. And you've got to keep the weight the same unless it's genuinely changed. And of course, you need to keep the height the same too. It's... Well, unless you've shrunk, I guess. Well, there is that, but I hadn't shrunk. I am 187 centimetres, I was down as 130. But like I said, I had no choice because in order to make those comparisons at the end, that had to remain the same. That is a decent explanation. Thank you. And as much as I would love to condemn you and get this all over the tabloid newspapers, well, firstly, they weren't interested. Were they not? No. <laughs> um, and also, this hasn't actually benefited you, has it, really? There is no effect from drafting during these specific Zwift training sessions. So the only difference is that you'd have been going faster on the flatter roads 
for a given power, mm. um, which is a power that you'd still have had to hit anyway. Exactly. Unless you're hoping to go pro again during the academy, you're not really racing against other people, only against yourself, aren't you? So all it meant was that my times for those three segments, like you just said, would have been slightly faster than they should have been, particularly for the flat sprint one, I think. Yeah, and you're not going to go pro again. See? There's not enough blood going to my brain. Well, that was confirmed not only by your power, but also by uh, a couple of current pros. And in fact, uh, can we just remind ourselves of what Heinrich House there? Uh, how he reacted to the prospect of you turning pro again? Can do. Bloody mate, are you serious? At your age, mate, you were lucky to turn pro in the first place. There we go then. So in the words of Heinrich Hausler, you were lucky to turn pro in the first place. <laughs> well, he didn't hold back, did he? <laughs> no, I mean, maybe he would have had a different view if he'd known your new height. Mega aero at four foot three, I reckon. I still doubt that he'd think I could turn pro again, even at 130 centimetres for the same weight and power. No, anyway, as always, we would love to get the opinion of you, our viewers. Uh, what do you think? Do you forgive Dan? Or has he frankly come up short in your expectations? Let us know in the comment section down below. Please go easy on me in no. the comment section. They can go as hard as they want, even Mauro Santambrogio. <laughs> right, the good news though, Dan, you have still qualified for the Zwift Academy Finals. Have I? Well, yeah, I mean, we both have. Uh, we are super excited, but we will be heading to Mallorca very soon, in fact, to film the final five days of the Zwift Academy, helping to crown a new male and female pro cyclist who's going to get a contract with Alperson Fenix or Canyon SRAM, respectively. I cannot wait. Just no? to be clear, I'm there as a presenter, not one of the final contestants. True that. Uh, yeah. It's going to be bigger and better than ever before, that Zwift Academy final. We'll have it for you right here on GCN in December. Oh, yeah. It's now time for GCN Inspiration. You're about to see three fantastic cycling-related photos, all of which will win a prize. To get involved, all you need to do is upload your own photos to the GCN app. Uh, first up in third place, running a Topic Mini 10 multi-tool is... Uh, it's Norbert. Congratulations, Norbert, uh, with this awesome photo from Poland. Uh, so uh, they're riding through Bieszczady. Yep, that's my best Polish for you. Um, the Bieszczady Mountains, in fact, in southeast Poland. Uh, the weather, the views, the colours, the roads, it was all so perfect that it seemed almost too much to take in, but I managed it. Um, and that does look does look good, yeah. Cool, I it? often think when I'm looking at the tour of Poland, on the days when it's not raining, it looks like a fantastic place to ride a bike, doesn't it? Well, it does, yeah. Well, there you go then. On more days when it's not raining in autumn, it looks <laughs> nice too. Yeah. Right uh, then. In second place, is Skoinch Rhinus winning a GCN Core Red sweatshirt. Two days after my 30th birthday, I treated myself with the hardest tarmac gravel climb in Germany. Average gradient 14.1%, over eight Ooh. kilometers of riding. Wow, that is steep and long, isn't it? That is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what you should do? Not just celebrate your 30th birthday, you should make a point of revisiting it every decade. Until yeah. you can't anymore. That'd be a bit sad, actually, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe you don't know do you're it getting again. old when you can't do your birthday ride. Yeah, but no, that is cool, and it looks fantastic as well, doesn't it? It does. Like, beautiful. So, you know, worth the pain and the misery, I would expect. Um, anyway, in first place this week, winning the new GCN cookbook. More on that later on. Indeed. Uh, a GCN Word logo sweatshirt in Burgundy. See? I got the memo. Um, and a GCN shadow stand is this one from Juliet Bravo. Early morning ride on my Canyon Grail, the Velu area, autumn and sun plus fog, the wow. perfect way to start a Sunday. That is a fantastic photo. Can, you, can I just tell you, that must be one of those moments on a ride where you think, oh, this is so amazing riding in this. Then you think, oh, I should probably stop and take a photo. <laughs> yes. And then you waste like 15 minutes setting up the Composing perfect photo. It. Well, that, it's not a waste if you win all those prizes, is it? That is a good point. See, it's worth uploading to the CCN app. If you just stuck it on Instagram, then you'd have got like a few likes or whatever. Mm. But a few endorphins from the likes on social media. Otherwise, you'd have been better off bicycling instead of taking yeah, photos. No actual physical prizes. No. But um, that's thoroughly deserving of the top prize this week. It's very well cool, composed isn't it? photo. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we will start with the news that the inaugural UCI Track Champions League kicks off this Saturday 
in Mallorca. It does indeed. So there is a brand new format with a total of 72 riders competing. 36 of them are sprinters who will be competing in the sprint and care and events, whilst the other 36 are endurance trackies who will compete in the scratch and the elimination races. And there are going to be some very big names taking part, aren't there? You can tune in to our live coverage on GCN Plus from 6 p.m. GMT for what's going to be two and a half hours of action-packed racing. Yeah, it's all condensed into two and a half hours. Uh, Manon will also be there as well, uh, making some extra content around the racing, so stay tuned for that. Moving on, and those of you who use the Welsh Cycling Network could be in for some even more dramatic scenery in the not-too-distant future, because £156,000 of artwork is set to be placed along the route. What? Yeah. Which sounds slightly bizarre, if you ask me. It does indeed, and it's even more bizarre when you realise that apparently the money could only be spent on artwork. Mm. So uh, not there we go. Cleared up, has it? No. Uh, moving on, Cecil Reddy is busy in the US riding a six and a half thousand mile loop around the country on a custom built solar powered electric bike. Yeah, his bike is a custom e bike that uses two 50 watt sun power solar panels to recharge the battery. He's currently 3,300 miles and 77 days into his journey, which he's making with a sustainable energy activist, Louis Forzan. The idea being to spread the word about about sustainable power. Mm. I think given the current weather conditions here, they wouldn't be getting very far each day in no. the UK on solar no. power. I guess they'd have to switch from solar powers to a wind turbine. Uh, but sticking with solar power, cyclists in Hungary will soon be able to ride on one of eight luminescent glow-in-the-dark bike lanes. Yeah, an experiment with the solar charged particles in Danube was a success, improving safety and encouraging more people to ride. So they've actually decided to roll them out to eight further locations around the country. Wow, that's great to see, Yeah, isn't it? I see what you did there. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, well. uh, next up, a reminder that we have got a brand new book. So after the success of the plant-based cyclist book last a couple of years ago now, uh, Nigel Mitchell is back with the cyclist cookbook with his 67 of his best recipes in it. Indeed, they're not all plant-based this time either, uh, so there's something there for everyone in this. Uh, it is available for pre-order in the GCN shop with an expected dispatch date of the 10th of November, so plenty of time before Christmas, and, and as you can see, We've got hard copies now. And, and there are, there's still some nice pictures of you and me in here, mate. So oh, that's, well, that's good. good. We should sell our hotcakes then. Yeah, and one of Alex Payton uh, using a banana as a pretend phone. That's which, hilarious, uh, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and Manon's, Manon uh, is laughing at that joke. Being a good friend that she is, laughing she is, at really yeah, bad yeah. Joke. <laughs> Well done, Alex. All uh, right, well, let's move on now and announce the winner of another awesome giveaway. This was for that 3T bike. To be precise, it was the 3T Race Max Italia Founders Edition, and that very lucky winner of this bike is... Jeff Logan! Congratulations, Jeff. Yes. That is, well, that's super lucky. Incredible yeah. prize. All right, let's finish cycling shorts with an update on the ZRL League for chippers. How are we getting on, Si? <laughs> chippers. Catch me, eh? Um, well, not very well, actually, as you're about to see. Right, I confess, tonight is one of those nights where were it not for the fact that I have something concrete in the diary and a bunch of mates waiting on me and expecting me to show up, I might have just elected to sit on the sofa. But generally speaking, it's always worth getting on the bike and pushing through, so fingers crossed. But for maximum motivation, I brought out the big guns got uh, Castelli's rudest, longest socks on for extra motivation. Um, and, uh, and obviously my white DMTs, because, uh, you know, well, when would you not wear white shoes? Uh, anyway, wish me luck. I think, despite the morale socks, I think maybe I was just a bit tired. I really struggled with the top end, so didn't make the split on the first lap. But then my group from 30 to 50 was plenty hard enough tonight, thank you very much. Florian Chabal from GCN Enfoncé, 
Do a stormer. That was fantastic to see. Oh, and Toby broke his uh, his whiff duck. That was his first time out. It's a fair play to him too. Oh, I'm not sure it was a great outing for Team GCN and the results though. So we'll see. I need to get some coaching. James Barnes, if you're watching, please, I would like, I would like some help. Thank you very much. First Swift race for me, Swift Racing League. I ended, played 60 or so. It was quite hard, but it was nice to race with the other guys and yeah, seeing, see, uh, looking forward for the races in the future. Hey guys, always a pleasure to take a shower with Simon. <laughs> uh, it was a good ride. Thanks mate uh, for helping me a bit. Uh, again, you, you were the strongest, but um, always good to ride together. We had fun and uh, see you soon on Zwift. Cheers. I need a real shower now. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now. And first up is- Wait, wait, Dan, sorry. Can, before we get started, can I just, can I just make a complaint, a formal complaint? Um, this is probably better done in an email to our HR department, but look, I'm being like trolled in the workplace. Someone stuck a zip tie on my chair. It genuinely wasn't me. I've got no idea who put that there. Really? No, it's not that funny either, is it? Well, it's definitely not funny, is it? No, I'm not happy about it's that. It's irked you. Zip tie. Uh, On to the proper hacks and bodges. Yep. Ronzilla86, uh, Modelo to the rescue. Had to replace an old Chinelli quill stem that was in a vintage Schwinn Paramount, and it had a 7mm Allen head for the quill wedge bolt. I don't have one lying about. Local hardware store didn't have one either. I even tried using an Imperial one, still no good, but remembered seeing an old mechanic do this once, and damn, it worked. Got it out and was able to replace them and continue with build. So effectively, just cut a piece of can out, wrapped it around uh, a six mil Allen key, I presume, and stuck it in and hey presto. What a great hack. Also, I'm really pleased that we've got that because I've got a seven mil and I've never, I've never known what the hell to do with it. But it turns out I just needed a Schwinn. Uh, you have got a seven mil Allen key, have you? I've got a seven mil, yeah. I, haven't, I, I, don't, I don't know why I have. But there we go. Um, also, can I tell you a really cool hack that I once did? Go on then. I needed an 8mm, um, like an emergency, and I didn't have one, and the people I was riding with didn't have one. So, I put two 4mm together, and I got that crank back on. Brilliant. So, two 4mm Allen keys, uh, a bit of simple maths. You probably could have just used a, a zip tie. Anyway, next up, from Japers45, is a two-stem cutting guide. No special tool needed. That's a good idea, that. I think I've done that before. I think I've done that so before. So I'm going to well. deem it a hack. Absolutely. Before. And 79% of people went hack for that one. And just to mention the Schwinn stem, 76% uh, people said hack for that. Brilliant. We've got off to a good start, haven't we? we Two have. grade A hacks there. Um, just make sure you use stems that you don't particularly like because uh, they get scratched, don't mm, they? If they you do. do that. Or just do the, like, the bottom of the stem so that you don't see it. Anyway, there we go. Uh, next up, we've got this one from Ozen78. Uh, save time and money on fitting a new crown race. 20 seconds on the stove, dropped on steer with oven gloves, cooled on tight from a 0.2 to 0.8 millimeter gap from hot. No scoring, no need for 86 pounds. Bring your own hammer tool. I tell you what, if that really does work, that's borderline genius. Well, I was reading through some of the comments on the GSIN app about this particular hack forward slash bodge, and a few people were saying you shouldn't use such heat anywhere near uh, carbon, which the main part of the forks are. Other people say you can freeze the forks. Yeah, but you don't, need to get the, you don't need to get the forks hot. You get them. Yeah, but you then put a very hot race onto the forks. Oh, I see. Has that changed your opinion? Wow. Apparently, apparently you can freeze the forks and that will make them small enough for the race at normal temperature to go on, but I don't know whether freezing is any better than very hot races going onto the fork legs. I'm not sure I could get a pair of forks in my freezer. No. Well, I, I don't want to show off, but I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, but even if I could, I'm not entirely sure what, my, uh, what my, my family would think about finding a pair of uh, forks. Yeah, well, I don't think they need to be in there long. Yeah. Anyway, we are drifting away from the we subject are. in hand. Uh, I will go, I'm going to go bodge just based on what other people's comments said. Well, I'm going to say hack based on... Um, Your own opinion. Uh, based on my own opinion <laughs> and a lack of knowledge. But perhaps uh, there's always, there's a lot of people who are very clued up 
What's mm. the GCN channel? I love this fact. So if you could perhaps get involved in the comment section and educate us as to whether or not this is a foolhardy uh, thing. Also, I see what you did there, Sai, getting comments that aren't condemning me for having 130 centimetres uh, yeah. on Zwift. And um, also, you might not have a carbon steerer, in which case, jobs are good, right? Well, yeah, exactly that. There we go. Uh, right, moving on to the best DIY aero hack of all time that we promised you at the start of the show. It's from R7J4KR8TZC on the GCN app. Uh, not convinced this helps much. Spotted this chap who clearly has some insight into aerodynamics and an ability to implement this in an affordable way. I like that. <laughs> Very much indeed. Um, also, that would look like it's waterproof. Well, I did think that, yeah. If he just covered his head as well, you could have other uses apart from going very fast. You know what? Because like the whole thing about if you're commuting and you get wet legs, like if it's raining, even if you've got mud guards, you get wet legs. So if there was some kind of aerodynamic, waterproof leg covering slash everything else, then I'd be in for that. Then you think he's onto something. I would totally, I would totally wear that <laughs> riding around town if it kept my legs dry. Oh, well, it's an obvious bodge from me. I'm gonna say hack. Oh yeah. Uh, well, you are in the minority side because only 18% of people said that was a hack. Right. Well, you try commute around with wet trousers. Finally, uh, Michael. After upgrading the handlebar, needed a new GPS DI2 junction mount, decided to make a carbon part from a 3D printed mould. After sanding the mould, it was coated with a thin mould epoxy resin sanded again. It's attached with the stem screws and the carbon part is reinforced with aluminium housing to protect the carbon from high torque. Result is a lightweight 18 gram and maybe aero part. A lot of fun designing and prototyping such parts. Wow. Well, I didn't hold out much hope from the first photo where it looked a little bit of a bodge of a bodge, but then when you see the finished article in Not situ... Not bad, that, is it? Yeah! That's, what a, a, that's a real hack. But what a sexy mount. Hmm. Well, surprising. Are you going with hack? Oh, yeah. Surprisingly, 32% of people voted bodge. Maybe they didn't get further than the first photo. Well, no, you do have to scroll across when there are multiple photos uploaded yeah. to the GSEN app, so make sure you do that because it's definitely a hack by the time you get to the end that's of those right. photos. Don't judge a hack by the first photo, no. that's what they say, isn't it? Yeah, that's the first rule of phrase. Thumb. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Well, that is it for Hacker Bodge. We have, by and large, tremendous yeah. selection of hacks. Um, well done, you lot. And also, uh, keep them coming in. Of course, and if you want some more hacks or bodges, just check out the GCN app because there's loads on there. We just select a few each week. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to win a coveted GCN Elite water bottle without the zip tie hacks that uh, I added last week and have forgotten to take off. Uh, anyway, this was the photo that we gave you last week and asked you to caption. The winner, well, actually, can we have a. Uh, like a secondary honourable mention. Yes, we're going to have to because we've got two captions to read out. Yeah, and only one can win a bottle because we're too tight to give away two in one week. <laughs> right then, Michael Roberts, congratulations. You win nothing but an honourable mention. <laughs> Don't worry, Toon, in the eyes of the UCI, using the barrier like that is only a minor offence. Yes. There you go. Definitely worth the honorary mention, wasn't it? Indeed, yeah. But the winner of the actual prize, the bottle, is Kelly Black, who put, as expected, the UCI ignored the potential safety issues of the new Bray advertisements on the barriers. There you go. Is it not Braille? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. I just said it wrong. <laughs> There we go. Um, you just said it in a, like a really posh way. I'm getting mixed up with the barbecue in South Africa. Yeah, there we or go. That bry. I <laughs> can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you suitably butchered that caption anyway. <laughs> right, moving on. Uh, this is the photo for this week. Lucinda Brandt and Denise Betzema on a podium of a cyclocross race. Dan? I'll get you started. Uh, Denise Betzema goes to great lengths to prove that the height she's put into Zwift is not fictitious. Brilliant. Love it. See what you did there? Does make it look very small, doesn't it? It does. If you indeed, imagine yeah. that to be a normal sized glass of Quaramont beer. Yeah, indeed. There we go. It's like your dream of glass that size, isn't it? It is, yeah. I would like to get one, actually. I think they do sell them, but uh, I am too tight to buy one of those. Too fair, actually. It'd be a bit of a nightmare to drink four bottles of Quaramont out of that. Like, you'd be knackered by the end, wouldn't you? As well as my biceps, drink. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Just have to get a straw in the end. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was, yeah, no, don't do that. Anyway, uh, right, there we go. If uh, if you think that you can better Dan's caption, that you probably can, then uh, get involved in the comments section down below. 
Let's go through a few of our favourite comments now before we let you know what's coming up over the next week on GCN. Uh, starting with a few underneath last week's GCN show. Uh, ben Turner wrote in saying, My dear wife wandered past whilst I was watching this excellent episode. Oh, thanks, Ben. Is that father and son, she asked. <laughs> Laughed so hard, beer came out of my nose. <laughs> well, just to clear this up once and for all, Sai is not my dad. Are you? No. No, I'm not. No, 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 it's dad. No. Uh, right, uh, Patrick Murphy, um, with relation to uh, the, the the big talking point from last week, said the rules is definitely something that most people have dropped um, from cycling. Started out as a bit of fun, but then people took them too seriously, and they became uncool. Yeah, and just a little bit snobby, didn't they? Really? Yes. So, um, so yeah, I mean, they were fun, mark, didn't they? They weren't they? But there we go. So yeah, spot on, Patrick. I think and you're right there. James McHugo, McHugo. Uh, stopped shaving years ago when I stopped racing. Biking is for fun and health now. Years ago, we used to start a race or a long day with an espresso. Now it's a coffee with Irish cream and finish a long ride with a Guinness. <laughs> More like it, isn't it? There you go. Yeah. Um, you could go for a bike ride with him, couldn't you? I could do, yes. Definitely. Uh, right then, except you've got to shave legs now. So probably wouldn't yeah, want to see Yeah, grow back, hopefully. No, right. Uh, underneath 10 things we wish we'd known about e-bikes, Deb Lewis said, I've been riding my e-bike for a while now. I'm 68 years old. I've lost 30 pounds this year between eating better and riding. I recently rode a gravel trail 55 miles and had a third of the power left. Um, so there we go. Yeah, brilliant. That's super cool, isn't We've it? We've got so many stories underneath that video. Yeah. Along similar lines, actually, which are awesome. all great to read. Uh, under how fit did I get in eight weeks, and indeed how tall, uh, Sam Ham Fast, well done Dan, you are an encouragement to the viewers of GCN who are over 40 and ordinary people. True that, <laughs> absolutely. It was cool actually, and it, I mean it's slightly annoying how much you improve in not very much bicycling. I am quite motivated now, I did two Zwift sessions last week after I'd done that test. Did you? Completely out of choice. Just jump back on. Wow, I made, I have cool. My height is now correct as Oh well. is it? And I have got Jude an account. So that mix up there shouldn't happen anymore. Uh, Mike S was also quite impressed by your support and encouragement at the seven minute mark of that video. Thanks. Uh, more so than I was. <laughs> Sorry, mate, what are you doing? On the final segment of my finish line test. Cool. Doing a warm up, yeah? No, I'm on the final segment. <laughs> Bastard. All right. No. Well, it's also not priceless, actually. It's for sale in the GCN shop. No. Yeah, pr personalised encouragement from presenters. All proceeds to charity. Blimey, I've not been asked to do anything. Well, no one's asked for you, so uh, yeah. Harsh. No, that's not true actually, you don't all rush at once, but um, you can get, uh, I think you can get George Hincapie to send you personalised messages of, of encouragement. Oh yeah, what's that company called? Cameo. Is it? Yeah. I've not been asked to go on that either. No, and Phil Guyman as well, uh, we, I think he's £500 or something like that. Wow, I might get into <laughs> this. He put quite a premium price tag on his personalised messages, he really did. <laughs> I might do it for 50p. <laughs> yeah. uh, right, anyway, uh, lastly, under that uh, that video with Dan, uh, this from Clemen uh, Sulegoy, uh, made me chuckle. In Monday's GCN Racing News Show, we'll have transfer news. Israel Startup Nation signed former World Tour pro Dan Lloyd uh, with immediate effect. He's a great sign for us and also helps us reach our goal of lowering the average age of our riders. <laughs> they have signed some quite old riders. <laughs> yeah. Almost giving me hope. It's like the old boy squad, isn't it? Just like a bunch of veterans, like banging around the world, yeah. like just for one last crack. There's a whole host of aging pros singing, and this is a lucrative retirement period. Mm. Yeah. That's slightly harsh, but still. Uh, anyway, coming up on the channel this week, uh, on Wednesday, we have got the top five most expensive road bikes ever. Can you guess which Wowzers. is the top of the list? No. Uh, on Thursday, over on GCN Tech, it is of course the Tech Show. And on Friday, we have got some top tips from you, which we got from the pros at the Tour of Britain a few weeks ago. Indeed, the women's tour. Oh, it's a women's, women's tour, tour Britain. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, on Saturday, to coincide with the Track Champions League, we've got a track sprint challenge, GCN versus GMBN. Can the GCN presenters- I don't think we'd beat them. Out sprint. GMBN, no, I don't <laughs> think we can either. I mean, obviously, we're not invited to that particular one because our sprinting prowess is too good, GMBN, yes. so they wouldn't come yeah. if we can uh, just we make there. it up the banking, can't we? That's, that's right, yeah. And then uh, on Sunday, Ollie thinks he might have found the new steepest climb in the world. So we uh, await with interest to see what he has uncovered. Mm, sounds intriguing. It does indeed, doesn't it? Uh, right, well, that is pretty much all 
for this week's GCN show. Uh, we have got a few more bits of racing coming up. The European Cyclocross Championships are this weekend, and if you missed yesterday's Coppenberg Cross, it's brutal Oof. and muddy. It is indeed. Go back and watch it on demand on GCN Plus. Yeah, well, and speaking of GCN Plus, we've got a, a cracker of a film for you this week. Cheap Bike versus Superbike. Many of you have seen the YouTube version that is now probably four years old. Um, so we thought it was about time we did a new bumper version. So Dan and I have been putting a Decathlon Triban RC120 through its paces head to head against the Pinarello Dogma F12. So uh, make sure you check that one out. Um, it was it was it was good. It involves it was, ice cream. It was very beer, interesting actually. Yeah, wind tunnels, the works. Right, well that's it for this week, isn't it? It is. That's it for this week's GCN show. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you have, please give it a thumbs up just down below.